What's up you guys, it's Chris here for Hustle & Bustle. Today we're gonna to talk about real estate and ATM business. I see a lot of questions in the community of the ATM. You know, that's a business that I do. The question there is which one is better? And they often portray that ATMs are so much better, but let's see if that's true. My mission with this channel is to provide you more information and more value regarding finances, motivation and creating wealth without all the hype because we all know how on TV everything is so hyped up. Also, I wanna show you that everybody can do it you don't need a rich parent or you don't need to inherit the money. At the end of the day, life is what you make out of it. With all that said, let's see what, what we're going to look at today. So I've structured today's video in uh, a few segments. It's going to be barrier to entry, money leverage, market saturation, cash flow, appreciation, tax deferral or taxes, uh, outsourceability. And in the end, we're going to finish with an example. So barrier to entry with uh, ATM business is pretty low. And by pretty low, that's kind of a fluid concept. It depends what low means to each and one of us. To buy an ATM, you're going to spend about $2,000 to $2,200. And then you're going to need, depending, I would say $3,000 to fill in the ATM. Some people put one, some people put two. Um, in other videos, if you've seen, if you want to go every week to the ATM, you can put, you can maybe get away with $1,000. If you want to go once a month, maybe you're going to put three. In some accounts, I put five. It really depends where the account is, how far it is, and how much cash it burns through. There's some accounts that burn through $15,000 a month. I personally don't have any of those accounts. But for simplicity purposes, let's say that $5,000 is your barrier to entry for one account. Now let's go with the real estate. From what data I've gathered here, I'm gonna include a picture here. We're looking at uh, 2021, an average household in America cost $408,000. But that's the average for the whole United States. For example, in New York and California, it's crazy expensive. Here where I'm at in Jacksonville, the medium price is 235. So the barrier to entry is pretty high. I'm gonna take example 235 because this is where I live. You need to take example and compare that to where you live, to which state, city, county, whatever, where you live. Because it, it doesn't make sense for me to compare if the average real estate of the United States is 400,000, but that does not apply to me. Say so the barrier to entry here is twice as less. So where I'm at is 235. So, but with real estate, we're gonna touch on money leverage later. Do you really need the whole 235 to get into a house? Investment property we're talking about, not primary. Although with the primary house, there's still ways to make money and rent them out. For example, the house that I live in right now, why am I, why am I looking around? I still rent out two of my three available rooms. You can still turn your primary residence into a rental if you wanted to. The second point we're gonna to touch on is exactly money leverage. And by the way, before I forget, if you do like that content and you want me to continue making videos like that and you wanna help the channel grow, please give it a like and comment down below and consider subscribing. So money leverage, into the ATM business, there's no money leverage. Um, there's no, maybe you can take a business loan, but that's a business loan. Uh, you cannot, for example, if $5,000 cost you to get an ATM, you do need the whole $5,000 unless you take a loan. But the loan will be business loan or personal loan, which has way higher <clears throat> interest rate than say mortgage, which you're going to compare that to because in real estate, the real money leverage and the real benefit of it comes that, that mortgages are widely available and that's a normal thing for the banks to do. Whether when you go to an ATM business, uh, go to the bank for the ATM loan, I'm not sure how willing there will be, first of all, to open an account for you, because that's hard for a few people to open an account just to vault the ATM. And then the banks to give you a loan for your ATM business, I'm not sure how easy that will be. Considering you're just starting, there is nothing to show for your LLC if you had decided to LLC your business. Whether with a house, this is very normal, this is widely spread, we all know what documents we need to present to the bank, and the bank will give us the loan way, way easier than a business loan on a business that we just opened yesterday. So well, for the ATMs, there's no money leverage whatsoever, at least not none that I see. But for the real estate, you have a few options. If you wanna get first time home buyer, I just learned yesterday a couple of credit unions actually allow you to buy a property with zero money down, which means all you need to do is present your two years of tax returns and W-2s and the last month or two of pay stubs, 
and pay closing costs. Closing cost is 3% on 235,000. That's about say $7,000. So for $7,000 or for the price of a machine and a half, uh, ATM machine and a half, you can own a median house that is worth 235,000. So the leverage is huge. So with 3%, you can control 100% of the asset. There is another way for if we focus on investment properties, let's say you already have a home and we want to only focus on investment property uh, because it might, some of you might say it's not really fair to compare buying a primary. You can put 20% down. Some banks used to allow 15, but let's take the example of uh, putting down 20% down. On 235,000, 20% is $47,000. So for the price of about 10 ATMs, you can own an investment property. And we're gonna give that as an example at the end so you can see how much cash flow, appreciation, and things like that you, you're gonna get uh, at the end of the day. But there's a lot of buts here, unfortunately. Uh, if you have 50K, it is very easy in real estate to just obtain a property for $50,000 and get the renovation money uh, it, say it's a teardown property, you obtain it for 50K, at least here in Jacksonville market. Then you put $50,000 towards the property and you, you, you borrow that money from a hard money lender, such as me. You fix the property, now the property is worth 150. Then you mortgage it out, the bank's gonna give you 80% LTV or loan to value. And out of 150,000, 80% is 120. So now you get back your 50, you give back the 50 to the uh, hard money lender. Say you have soft costs and cost of money, $10,000, which is a lot, but say that's, that's how much it is. So 50 and 50 is 100 plus 10 for the soft cost and cost of cash is 110. The bank just gave you 120. So you end up with a property and $10,000 on top. So you can do that infinite amount of times and with that $50,000 that you originally had, that we're gonna compare later, if you had bought 10 ATMs, what's gonna happen. But with that same $50,000, say the renovation takes three months, or let's say four months. That means you can buy three houses every year. They're not the median, they're below the median houses, but you can buy three of them each year and continue doing that every year and every year and every year. And that's gonna come into play later on in our example. So there's many ways in real estate to, to leverage your money um, you can take a, a hard money loan to, to help you uh, make the fixes of the property or the other way around. You can take 50K from a hard money lender to buy the property and then with your 50K to fix it, whatever. Or you can look at it if you want to buy the property for 150 and take the money from a hard money lender and put 50,000 of your own money to fix the property. Now you're all in in the property 200,000, say 210 with all the soft cost and cost of cash. And if the property appraises for 250,000, which I think if the property is 150 and you put 50,000 in, should appraise for more than 50,000. But either way, 80% of that is 200K and you're all in for 200K. So you can still do the same thing and recycle your money and not really net any money after the cash out refi, but you're break even and you can, can continue doing that every year. For example, for one year, if you get can get three properties that are worth 250,000, all of a sudden you're controlling 750,000 worth of properties. If the renovation takes three months only instead of four, you already control $1 million worth of properties, which all of them appreciate that we're gonna get into the next uh, uh, segment. But for money leverage, which I'm talking here, there's literally no money leverage that I can think of for ATMs and there's a lot of creative uh, financing and money leverage that you can use to build your wealth and portfolio um, into the real estate market. And by creating wealth and creating money, I think there's a difference because when you create wealth, generally don't pay taxes. So next is market saturation, which with that I mean how hard it is to actually obtain a good account for the ATMs. It's no secret that there's been many ATM companies, a few of them very big, that have all of the good spots, right? Strip clubs, bars, you all know, hotels, like busy hotels. For me, it's very hard to get into those. My best accounts are a couple of barber shops. I make almost 100 transactions a month. Everything else I make between 50 and 70, and some accounts I make between 30 and 50 transactions. So the great, the best accounts are already taken. From what I hear from the ATM community, the majority of the old 
dogs into the business, they buy each other's routes. They don't just go and look for new accounts. They might go to look for new accounts, but the good accounts that are there, and if it's busy, if that's a great account that is busy, that means that the business is making money, so they're not gonna go bankrupt. Maybe you can catch a new business that is opening up, like new club, new strip club, or something like that, but generally, those people already, the people who deal with in, within the strip club industry, they already know all the owners, they're not that many. So it's kind of hard. Casinos, for example, I mean, I'm pretty sure whoever votes one or two or three casinos, they vote all of them, if the casinos don't vote, or don't, don't have their own ATMs. So it's pretty hard, in my opinion, um, to get into the ATM business and grab an amazing account. It's not impossible, but it's very hard. In real estate, it is way easier, in my opinion. I'm into the business, I'm into the trenches. I'm telling you, it's way easier. All of my properties I've bought under market value. The last one I've bought for 112 or 113, I'll lie to you, but the property was worth 145, and I'm just a small fish. I mean, how many big dogs missed on this opportunity on this property and did not beat me with the price? And there's many, many uh, different tricks you can, you can do with real estate. There's lists online that you can see which properties are foreclosure, which properties are going into a tax deed sale, uh, tax lien sales. There, there's many different ways. So a small guy like me can actually get a property under market value. There's no such term really in ATM business. You cannot get a, an account under, under market value. Uh, People pretty much know if you're about to buy somebody's route or somebody's account, they know how much it's worth. You know what I mean? Maybe you're not going to buy it on a 25 multiplier, which everybody wants that price. They usually go for 18 to 25 uh, times their monthly income. So maybe somebody's going to sell you a, a, an account for 18 times their monthly income, but that's not under market value. If you buy it for 10, sure, but I have not heard of that yet. Maybe it happened, I don't know. But there's not really under market value ATM location. But the market saturation, in my opinion, is easier into real estate and harder into the ATM business. Now let's go to the cash flow aspect of it. All right, guys, uh, I think that's gonna be for today. The video is pretty long. The whole video is about 30 minutes, so I'm gonna cut it in two parts. I hope you enjoyed so far. If you do, please let me know by commenting and liking the video. Also consider subscribing. Next time we're going to go to cash flow, appreciation, taxes and an example. And that will be it. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you next time.